Well, war criminals have no place in Canada. Neither do people who work for governments guilty of war crimes. Rashidi Ikanza Zekola worked for the corrupt government of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Zekola ultimately fled to Canada with his family. His application for refugee status was denied. Zekola's case has wound its way through our judi judicial system all the way to the Supreme Court. Jessica Hume in our Ottawa studio is watching this case for developments and she joins us now from our Parliamentary Bureau. Jessica? Hi, Brian. So that's right. What happened this morning was the Supreme Court of Canada essentially granted the appeal for this man, uh, Rashidi Izakola. Now, uh, just to put this a little bit in, in context for you, uh, for our viewers, Mr. Izakola is a Congolese individual. He worked between 2004 and 2008 as the embassy liaison to the United Nations. And prior to that, he also worked as an economic advisor to the Congo's government. So, um, you know, this is a government that ha is known for having committed crimes against humanity. So when Mr. Izakola, he said he did, does not support the government, and when that lack of support for the government became known within the country, he says that's when he began receiving threats uh, and intimidation, not just from the government, but also from the government's uh, intelligence communities. So, as you mentioned, he fled to Canada and arrived in Montreal in 2008 with his wife and eight children, and that's when they filed their claims for refugee status. Now, the immigrant Refugee Board actually rejected those claims. Uh, he, uh, Mr. Izakola, was able to bring his case to the federal court where he was successful but lost on appeal. So what happened today, uh, Brian, and I want to be clear here, the, the Supreme Court wasn't ruling on whether Mr. Izakola is guilty or not guilty of any of these crimes against humanity. But the reason behind their ruling is that they say that the initial test conducted by the Immigration and Refugee Board was the wrong test for Mr. Izakola. So what the IRB did was, what did when they were looking into his uh, claim for refugee status, they conducted a test that looks at uh, how much knowledge this individual would have had uh, in relation to those crimes against humanity. The argument here, of course, is, you know, this is a man who worked for the government, who defended the government. How could he be unaware of crimes against humanity committed by that government? But what the Supreme Court said today was that this is not the right test. In fact, the test the IRB should have been conducting was uh, to see the extent to which Mr. Izakolo participated in those crimes against humanity. So nobody was really vindicated today, Brian. What happened was that the Supreme Court essentially said, the IRB, you did the wrong test. They've kicked it back to the IRB where now they're going to have to proceed forward using the correct test. So again, now what they're looking into is the extent to which Mr. Mr. Izakola would have participated uh, in those crimes against humanity. So it's not, uh, you know, this is not a case closed. Um, I was told by a spokesperson of the court this is progress. Uh, but yeah, it's basically been kicked back to the IRB, which now has to perform a new set of tests. All right, Jessica, thanks for getting us up to speed. You're welcome. Jessica Hume in our Parliamentary Bureau.